And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell, and today we're talking about a game called Zooscape. Now, this is a small card game from Tasty Minstrel Games, designed by Hisashi Hayashi. Um, it is a game about collecting animals, capturing animals for your zoo, while avoiding hunters and things like that. This is kind of a, a pick between a bluffing, I mean, a mix between a bluffing game and a I split everyone choose style game. Here's how it plays. Okay, so you're going to have a deck of cards, and you're going to split it into five stacks of cards, and the number of cards in each stack is going to be determined by the number of players in a game. So we're playing a, a four-player game. So each round, one person's going to be the zoo manager. Uh, we know this because they have the zoo manager card. They also have the clipboard, because everyone who's a manager has a clipboard. And they have this dividing card. You're, they're going to take this pile of cards and put it out one at a time here in the middle. Now, players are going to be wanting to get points on these cards. Uh, so each of these cards is going to be worth a certain number of points. There are two things on the cards, and this is kind of a long stretch of cards here. There's two things on each card. There is how many points the card is worth. So you see that the parrots are worth, the birds are worth four, the crocodiles are worth five, and then there's a cage limit. The cage limit means I can have two crocodiles. If I get more than two crocodiles, instead of them being worth five points, they will be worth minus one each. So getting two crocodiles is fine. Getting three is a bad thing. Like the elephant is worth eight points, but I can only have one of them. Same with giraffes. Birds are worth four points, but they have no cage limit because aviariums are huge and you can have as many birds as you want. So what the uh, manager player is then going to do is he's going to split the cards into two groups. So this is the first group, and this is the second group. He's then going to place the clipboard in one of the groups. So maybe he sticks it over here. Each player is then going to simultaneously select whether they're going to choose the first group or the second group. They're going to put these, one of these cards face down and then reveal it. If you're the only person to pick a group, you get all the cards in that group. If nobody picks a group, all the cards in that group are put underneath wherever the clipboard happens to be. If multiple people have picked a group, then we're going to have to split that group further. So you'll stick one of the, you'll stick this in here and split that group some more. And then players will basically pick between that group, the ones who haven't got something yet. And you'll keep going until everyone has gotten something or until you can no longer split it. Let's say there's only one card left, in which case each player gets a fish card as compensation. Do you feel better now? And so that's essentially how the game's going to play. You're going to do that for five rounds. You're going to pull the cards off the deck. You're trying not to get hunter cards because they are worth minus four and aren't too good for you. Vet cards could be good or bad. They make you immediately discard two animal cards, which could be bad, but could also, if you have three crocodiles, for example, you could get rid of one of them and go back down to just, you know, having two, which will give you more points. A wild animal will immediately be... When you get this animal, you're going to go through here and get a card from the stack of cards that's not being used in the game. And then there is a chameleon who you just stick with another group and it becomes a creature of that group. Um, so then there will be a new manager. And by the way, the manager will be passing around during a round as, as if, if you need to keep splitting the cards and moving the clipboard and things like that. And so there's going to be different managers as you play each of the rounds. And after the fifth round, you will add up all your points, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, first of all, we really got to say that the artwork and the design, the graphic design for this game is incredible. It looks amazing. I just like looking at these cards. I would, if, I, if there was a blown up picture of one of them, I would stick it on my wall. That's how good these look, and I'm really glad to have them. So. So that looks fantastic. Um, the gameplay itself, though, is where it matters, right? So first of all, this game does not work as well with three players. The I split you choose means almost always one person, well, not almost always, but always when you have two sides, one person's going to get one side. So the person who picks that side, if you can do that a few times and no one else, that other rest of the I splitting, I choosing doesn't matter because that person has a lot of cards. 
Now that is mitigated somewhat because you don't want all of the cards. You don't want too many cards. Uh, and so you get too many cards of a type and you will have fewer points. So I do like that. That kind of works out. But I just felt it didn't play as, as smoothly with three as it did with four and five and so on. But the whole, the, the manager is picking the two groups. Usually they'll make them even, but they might not. And then if one group is not picked by anybody, which is always fascinating, that goes underneath the clipboard, which could then be in one of the groups. So you'll get those cards. And then of course, there's always going to be people who cross each other. It's going to happen every round. So then that group gets split. And wait a minute, I don't want that group anymore because there's a hunter in there and I don't also don't need that third uh, crocodile to add to my thing. So that's kind of an interesting thing. The game feels a little clunkier than I would like it. I don't know how to explain it. You would think the game would just be pick, split, go, pick, split, go. And it is to some degree, but there's also that clipboard and moving the cards into the clipboard and they don't want to get anything, get a fish as a... I don't know, it felt like there might have been one too many little things in this, but still it's pretty good. Now it's going to be compared probably to Animals on Board because that game is about splitting groups of animals and you take them. And that game's a fascinating um, game that from uh, Stronghold slash uh, Eggerspiel. And I really like Animals on Board. I like this one too, probably not as much, but this one isn't just splitting and choosing. This one is splitting, now try to outguess everybody else. What animals do they want? Which one are they going to pick? And the game is fast enough that it doesn't really matter. Uh, the box says on it here, 15 to 30 minutes. 30 minutes would be a very long game of this. I'll say 15 to 20 minutes. And a good chunk of those minutes is going to be spent adding up your points, really. It's a fast, simple game with gorgeous art. Um, the uh, concepts in it of splitting and then, you know, outguessing other people, I think will go over well and it plays pretty well with like the larger groups of people because there's a lot of people jockeying for the different animals. So definitely one worth checking out if only to gaze at how beautiful it is. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah.